Hi, I'm Melissa from Starry Family Farm, and today I'm going to be reading for March 16th for the Bible in a Year Challenge, and all the previous readings are in a playlist called Bible in a Year Readings, and those will be linked at the end of this video. So for March 16th, we will be reading from Deuteronomy 13 through 14, Ecclesiastes 1, 1 through 11, and Luke 17. Deuteronomy chapter 13, a warning against idolatry. Suppose there are prophets among you, or those who have dreams about the future, and they promise you signs or miracles, and the predicted signs or miracles take place. If the prophets then say, Come, let us worship the gods of foreign nations, do not listen to them. The Lord your God is testing you to see if you love him with all your heart and soul. Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. Obey his commands, listen to his voice, and cling to him. The false prophets or dreamers who try to lead you astray must be put to death, for they encourage rebellion against the Lord your God, who brought you out of slavery in the land of Egypt. Since they try to keep you from following the Lord your God, you must execute them to remove the evil from among you. Suppose your brother, son, daughter, beloved wife, or closest friend comes to you secretly and says, let us go worship other gods, gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known. They might suggest you worship the gods of people who live nearby or have come from the ends of the earth. If they do this, do not give in or listen and have no pity. Do not spare or protect them. You must put them to death. You must be the one to initiate the execution. Then all the people must join in. Stone the guilty ones to death because they have tried to draw you away from the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. Then all Israel will hear about it and be afraid, and such wickedness will never again be done among you. Suppose you hear in one of the towns the Lord your God is giving you that some worthless rabble among you have led their fellow citizens astray by encouraging them to worship foreign gods. In such cases, you must examine the facts carefully. If you find it is true and can prove that such a detestable act has occurred among you, you must attack that town and completely destroy all its inhabitants, as well as all the livestock. Then you must pile all the plunder in the middle of the street and burn it. Put the entire town to the torch as a burnt offering to the Lord your God. That town must remain a ruin forever. It may never be rebuilt. Keep none of the plunder that has been set apart for destruction. Then the Lord will turn from his fierce anger and be merciful to you. He will have compassion on you and make you a great nation, just as he solemnly promised your ancestors. The Lord your God will be merciful only if you obey him and keep all the commands I am giving you today, doing what is pleasing to him. Chapter 14, Ceremonially Clean and Unclean Animals Since you are the people of the Lord your God, never cut yourselves or shave the hair above your foreheads for the sake of the dead. You have been set apart as holy to the, Lord, to the Lord your God, and he has chosen you to be his own special treasure from all the nations of the earth. You must not eat animals that are ceremonially unclean. These are the animals you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. Any animal that has split hooves and chews the cud may be eaten, but if the animal doesn't have both, it may not be eaten. So you may not eat the camel, the hare, or the rock badger. They chew the cud but do not have split hooves. And the pig may not be eaten, for though it has split hooves, it does not chew the cud. All these animals are ceremonially unclean for you. You may not eat or even touch the dead bodies of such animals. As for marine animals, you may eat whatever has both fins and scales. You may not, however, eat marine animals that do not have both fins and scales. They are ceremonially unclean for you. You may eat any bird that is ceremonially clean. These are the birds you may not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the osprey, the buzzard, kites of all kinds, ravens of all kinds, the ostrich, the nighthawk, the seagull, hawks of all kinds, the little owl, the great owl, the white owl, the pelican, the carrion vulture, the cormorant, the stork, herons of all kinds, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects are ceremonially unclean. For you and may not be eaten, but you may eat any winged creature that is ceremonially clean. Do not eat anything that has died a natural death. You may give it to a foreigner living among you, or you may sell it to a foreigner. But do not eat it yourselves, for you are set apart as holy to the Lord your God. Do not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. The giving of tithes. You must set apart a tithe of your crops, one-tenth of all the crops you harvest each year. Bring this tithe to the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored, 
and eat it there in his presence. This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the firstborn males of your flocks and herds. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to fear the Lord your God. Now the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored might be a long way from your home. If so, you may sell the tithe portion of your crops and herds and take the money to the place the Lord your God chooses. When you arrive, use the money to buy anything you want, an ox, a sheep, some wine or beer. Then feast there in the presence of the Lord your God and celebrate with your household. And do not forget the Levites in your community, for they have no inheritance as you do. At the end of every third year, bring the tithe of all your crops and store it in the nearest town. Give it to the Levites who have no inheritance among you, as well as to the foreigners living among you, the orphans and the widows in your towns, so they can eat and be satisfied. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. Okay, then Ecclesiastes 1. So chapter 1, and then verses 1 through 11. Okay. These are the words of the teacher, King David's son, who ruled in Jerusalem. Everything is meaningless. Everything is meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. What do people get for all their hard work? Generations come and go, but nothing really changes. The sun rises and sets and hurries around to rise again. The wind blows south and north, here and there, twisting back and forth, getting nowhere. The rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full. Then the water returns again to the rivers and flows again to the sea. Everything is so weary and tiresome. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. History merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. What can you point to that is new? How do you know it didn't already exist long ago? We don't remember what happened in those former times. And in future generations, no one will remember what we are doing now. And chapter uh, Luke chapter 17. Teaching about forgiveness and faith. One day Jesus said to his disciples, there will, be, there will always be temptations to sin, but how terrible it will be for the person who does the tempting. It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around the neck than to face the punishment in store for harming one of these little ones. I am warning you, if another believer sins, rebuke him. Then if he repents, forgive him. Even if he wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, forgive him. One day the apostles said to the Lord, We need more faith. Tell us how to get it. Even if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, the Lord answered, you could say to this mulberry tree, May God uproot you and throw you into the sea, and it would obey you. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of sheep, he doesn't just sit down and eat. He must first prepare his master's meal and serve him his supper before eating his own. And the servant is not even thanked because he is merely doing what he was supposed to do. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say, We are not worthy of praise. We are servants who have simply done our duty. Hmm. 10. Healed of Leprosy As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, 10 lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, their leprosy disappeared. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God, I'm healed! He fell face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only this foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go, your faith has made you well. The coming of the kingdom. One day the Pharisees asked Jesus, When will the kingdom of God come? Jesus replied, the kingdom of God isn't ushered in with visible signs. You won't be able to say, here it is, or it's over there, for the kingdom of God is among you. Later, he talked again about this with his disciples. The time is coming when you will long to share in the days of the Son of Man, but you won't be able to, he said. Reports will reach you that the Son of Man has returned and that he is in this place or that. Don't believe such reports or go out to look for him. For when the Son of Man returns, you will know it beyond all doubt. It will be as evident as the lightning that flashes across the sky. But first, the Son of Man must suffer terribly and be rejected by this generation. When the Son of Man returns, the world will be like the people were in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings, right up to the time Noah entered his boat and the flood came to destroy them all. 
and the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. People went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building, until the morning Lot left Saddam. Then fire and burning sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, it will be business as usual, right up to the hour when the Son of Man returns. On that day, a person outside the house must not go into the house to pack. A person in the field must not return to town. Remember what happened to Lot's wife? Whoever clings to this life will lose it, and whoever loses this life will save it. That night, two people will be asleep in one bed. One will be taken away, and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding flour together at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Lord, where will this happen? The disciples asked. Jesus replied, Just as the gathering of vultures shows there's a carcass nearby, so will signs indicate that the end is near. That is all for today's reading, and I will see you next time.